Estonia is starting the public discussion how to legalize artificial intelligence. The reason uh, behind it is that uh, last year in uh, November when uh, the self-driving car task force uh, convened, one of our main uh, objectives was to kind of define the legal framework how to put self-driving vehicles on the streets. And uh, now the group of experts has kind of acknowledged that uh, working on traffic laws only is uh, kind of unreasonable because the question of artificial intelligence is much wider. Uh, it, uh, the scope is way bigger than just traffic laws. Uh, but uh, self-driving vehicles are quite a useful way of communicating this issue to the society. Because the question of the artificial intelligence is, uh, is quite complex and wide. Uh, it might consist of, uh, for example, financial bots uh, doing deals, uh, buying and selling shares on the stock exchange, but it might also, also might be a, a smart refrigerator who might uh, buy you some food. Uh, and it might be a self-driving vehicle. And it also might be a Siri in your iPhone uh, who perhaps could even buy you some plane tickets when you want to go to a vacation. So. The main aim for this regulation is to uh, define the liability of artificial intelligence in a user-friendly way, so that the average citizen on the, citizen, uh, on the street would actually uh, understand that in case of an incident or, or some kind of a accident, for example, uh, knows exactly who is liable in that particular case. But what is the state of the debate right now in the Estonian uh, public sector in general on the implementation of uh, artificial intelligence based solutions? We in Estonia here are uh, looking very intensely towards machine and deep learning solutions also within the public administration. Uh, we have acknowledged that uh, there are several ways how, how, how this technology can actually make uh, our systems much more efficient. Uh, the first things that come to mind are most simple uh, procedural uh, decisive points, uh, meaning that uh, maybe smaller cases within uh, the domain of police work, also uh, a lot of legal work can be done automati automatically, uh, and perhaps even until simplest cases in the court can be done in an automatic way. But these are just uh, slow hunches that we have. We are not uh, currently building any systems like that, but we see a great potential uh, within using this, this technology. And, uh, and I think that uh, as the Estonian e-government's experiments uh, and experience has showed, is that uh, there's a great potential in terms of efficiency, uh, making the systems uh, more basically cheaper, uh, do you think, you, do you think uh, that we're able to make or to point out three possible examples through which we can, uh, we can tell, for example, citizens how artificial intelligence can actually improve uh, their quality of life in terms of uh, benefiting of certain services that the public administration is providing? For the citizens' everyday life, uh, the legal framework we are now considering uh, the most simple way of putting it is giving legal representative rights to robots. This means that, uh, for example, if you have a, a Siri in your iPhone, you can uh, mandate the Siri to buy and sell services on your behalf. This means that uh, whenever you feel like that, hey, I want to go to Thailand for one month uh, vacation with my family, then uh, the Siri can buy the tickets for you. Another example would be the, the smart refrigerator. If you mandate the refrigerator to, uh, for example, buy you food and, uh, and uh, uh, necessities, uh, for example, with an amount of 100 euros a week, then uh, the refrigerator itself decides uh, that do you need milk, do you need dog food, uh, diapers, uh, uh, bananas or whatever else you need or like. You can make a grocery uh, list, let's say, that the robot would observe in a certain way. And the third uh, most uh, useful example is uh, within the domain of self-driving vehicles, 
where basically when you own a self-driving vehicle uh, during work hours, for example, you can send uh, uh, your car to, uh, I don't know, make money for you and work like an Uber type mm -hmm. of a service. And also whenever the car feels like uh, it's lacking energy, uh, the car can go and buy some electricity or gasoline. Or, or whenever the car feels like that uh, uh, something is broken or the tires need to be changed, mm -hmm. then the car can do it uh, uh, itself. There will be a kind of like robotics act or like a robotics law that will be implemented in the Estonian legal system. We are proposing actually four scenarios how to do that. Uh, the most radical one is giving separate legal subjectivity to artificial intelligence. This means that uh, currently the legal subjectivity is divided into two entities, one of them being private citizen and the other one being a company. Uh, then uh, we are proposing uh, that possibly making a third one, which would be AI. Uh, the other proposal that we have is making a separate robotics act, uh, defining the rules and liabilities within that framework and, and uh, possibly going that way. The third version that we are proposing is a mixture of uh, uh, basically changing the nature of what is will in legal meaning mm -hmm. and also making a separate robotics act. Will, uh, defined by Estonian war, uh, law currently means, is, is a very simple thing, uh, I don't know, I want to buy a car, I want to have a glass of water, that's very straightforward. In case of artificial intelligence, the straightforwardness of this question will go much wider. Uh, meaning that if I give uh, the mandate for the, my refrigerator to buy me some foods, I, do, I will not define whether I want milk, diapers, uh, dog food or cheese. But the decision that uh, which kind of product exactly I would want is made by the algorithm. So the, the definition is what is will and what is that I would want. Mm it's going much wider and more abstract in that case. Uh, we are not still sure what is the right way to go, but we are starting the public discussion so that the whole society would be involved in this. Uh, it's important to uh, get everyone on board with this debate because it is a radical and big change in the legal framework and it will affect the everyday lives of our citizens. The liability issue uh, in it, from a technical point of view, it's actually really easy uh, because uh, whether it's uh, producer's liability, it's somebody, it's, it's a human mistake, then it's always possible to point fingers, but uh, uh, it's also possible to go on some kind of insurance schemes, it's also possible to make kind of uh, state responsibility within the systems. Uh, the matter of deciding is, uh, is upon the public discussion actually going on. But the uh, difficult part of this liability issue is the emotional aspect. Because, for example, with the example of self-driving vehicles, uh, if my child will be killed or would be killed by a self-driving vehicle, then of course I'm hungry and I want to see who is to blame and who goes to prison. The thing and the most emotionally difficult thing that uh, society has to discuss through is the uh, logic that in these instances maybe sometimes there is nobody to blame. And we have to kind of acknowledge this. The example from nowadays world is uh, for example a train accident. Uh, when somebody is walking on the trainway, the train has some speed and inertia, uh, it cannot stop. In case of a self-driving vehicle, it might be also speed and inertia, uh, and, and there might be a reindeer running from the forest with a very fast speed, uh, and incidents will happen. But we have to emotionally go through this discussion so that everybody understands what will happen in these cases.